threads and processes. We have already seen that for a program to execute, it has to be loaded to the main memory and a program under execution is called a process. For a process to be executed, it requires some resources such as program counter, stack, register, then its program code and all the required data in its memory address space. There can be several instances of the same program and each such instance is a separate process. Let process 1 and process 2 be the two instances of the same program called A. Even though they use the same program, they require separate memory address space, their own memory address space, their own stack, register, so on. Hence, the processes do not share their address spaces, stacks, or registers. Hence, consider a web server that accepts the client request for web pages, images, and so on. A busy web server may have multiple client requests or multiple clients concurrently accessing it. To handle this, the server runs as a single process which accepts the requests and once a request is received, it will create a separate process to service that request. But this new process requires its own address space, track, registers and so on. Here comes the role of processes with threads. Each thread can be considered as a particular path of execution within the process. That is, each thread will be executing certain lines of code of the program by accessing some or all of the data associated with it. That is, each thread is performing a particular task within the process. In our previous example, the web server can create a thread, one thread, to handle the client requests for the server. And once one request is received, one more thread can be used to process that request. So the advantage here is that all the threads within the processes will be sharing the same memory address space of the process. The program code, data and files will be shared within the threads of the same process. But each thread requires its own stack and registers. Here we can see when a new process is created, a lot of memory overhead is there. But with this much memory space, by using threads with this much memory utilization, the same task can be performed. And we can call thread as a lightweight process while the process itself is called heavyweight. Now suppose we are having a single processor architecture. For parallelism, we switch the processor between the processors to create an illusion of parallelism. But here, since there is no sharing of address space, this context switch between the processes is very much expensive. But if we are using threads within the process, we can switch the processor between the threads within the process. Each thread can be allotted to the processor at a time. But since the threads share the address space of the process, the context switch can be done in a faster way. The single processor can process only one thread at a time, but it moves between the threads very quickly, creating an illusion of parallelism. So by using single threaded process, a process in which there are no threads defined can be called as a single threaded process and a process with two or more threads can be called as a multi-threaded process. In a single threaded process, we can achieve the parallelism between the processes, but in processes with threads, we can achieve the parallelism between the processes as well as between the threads within the processes. Now suppose we are having a multi-processor architecture. Here, while threading is not used, even though we have n number of 
processor since each process can be allotted only to one processor at a time. Thus, there is no use of these three processors. But in multi-threading, each thread can be allotted to each processor. So, with three processors, each thread can be allotted to the processor. The threads can be executed parallelly and the process will be completed in a faster way. This instead of a single process to the processor, we can here even split the process into threads and each thread can be allotted to the processor. So we can call thread as the basic unit of CPU utilization also.